It's Wednesday now. You know what that means. Tell them, Canada Dry. Is it two for one night at the cheap theater? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is, but it also <laughs> is. Uh, it's time for D A D Dynamite After Dark, baby. Boom. explosions happening baby oh. it's wednesday night that means you watched aew's wednesday night dynamite and now you're tuning in going guys make sense of this give give us some insight and that is what we shall do because i am the king of prediction wrestling i am the jfb james from boston and i am of course <laughs> I am the patron saint of professional wrestling. I am that gingered up, bubbly son of a bitch. I'm Canada F and dry. Damn it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. No. I, of course, um, I'm the founder of F and Wrestling. I just want to say that, you know, we're going to talk about the, the footage, I guess, uh, a little bit in the show or whatever. But I just want to say that. First and foremost, fuck tribalism. Yeah. And uh, I want to say that we love all, we, the reason we're named All F and Wrestling is because we love all the F and Wrestling. Yeah, we do. We're about all of it. So mm-hmm. uh, if you love AW, you love WWD, you love TNA, you love New Japan Pro Wrestling, you love NWA, you love uh, Major League Wrestling. It's all about all the effing wrestling, baby. I gotta say is this. I love it when sweaty guys beat the hell of the living hell out of each other. I love it. That's what I tune in for. Four or five times a week, it seems. <laughs> like, damn it. Anyways, we are enjoying the... Caleb says, we want the all the effing wrestling. Yeah, you, we got all the effing tell wrestling. Tell him, buddy. You tell him. You got this man over in the corner over here. That man can that man can wear a burlap sack and make it look sexy like it's made out of Gucci. Ow! I'm better than your <laughs> fortune, Lord Ryan Rich. Lord hey, Lord baby, Lord. I'm just trying to get some summer vibes going. I bought this shirt for vacation, and I was like, you know what? It's warm outside. Why the hell not? Let's manifest some warm weather here in the Midwest, baby. I'm better than your boyfriend, Lord Ryan Rich, and I'm glad to be with you gentlemen tonight talking about another dynamite. Woo. That's pretty much what I use my Blue Jays jersey for. When I know it's warm, I'm like, it's Blue Jay jersey time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're joined by, well, you know what? Normally we're joined by EVP, but he's oh. on assignment doing evil deeds. Doing God's work. <laughs> As an evil vice president. So we are joined by an expert not oh. just a any export expert the he expert. is an export he's an american export that's for damn yeah. so. <laughs> how you doing brother good evening ladies and gentlemen uh the, you usually hear me on saturdays i'm the saturday voice of f and wrestling but for whatever reason for reasons unknown to me EVP Joe is on assignment this evening. So here I am in his spot. I've got a beard. It's not as luscious as his. 
But, uh, you know, we're, we're still going to have a good time here. I'm the FN expert. I'm Mr. Isaacs. I love hearing that smooth, sexy voice. Okay, so Mr. Isaacs, we asked EVP last week, and we're going to ask you. I'm going to ask you right now. All right. Do you have a blue steel? Do I have a what? A blue steel. A blue steel. The, nah. look, the look from Derek Zoolander in the movie Zoolander? <laughs> I don't believe so, no. Okay, well, work on it and maybe bring it up on Saturday. Yeah. I, I will research that, Mr. Rich, because if, if better than your boyfriend is recommending a hairstyle, a facial hairstyle, I got to look into it. It's worth at least a Google search. Okay, so this is what Blue Steel is. I'll show you really quickly. Yes. That's Blue Steel. That's blue. Yeah, it's a, it's a look for a male model. Ah, uh, okay. Now, now right. yeah, kind of like that. Or or you can do Magnum. Mm. And if you can turn a left, by God, you've got the world in the balls. Uh, <laughs> we got male uh, models. We kick off Dynamite with two male models. It's going to be Samoa Joe. He's going to be taking on Dustin Rhodes. It's an eliminator match. Not wasting any time. Joe gets kicked in the head. Not even seconds after he, ex he, he exits Gorilla onto the stage, he gets kicked in the head by Swerve Strickland. How disrespectful to champ. Who would have seen this? Here's my problem. I, I, I feel like this is a good service announcement. Why do we have to destroy... Table. What if this a table ever done to you? A table supports food. You can eat at the table. You can do dirty things on the table. You can do it. Jippy, I'm curious. Yes. How much do you think the wrestling industry spends on tables? Millions in a year. Uh, yeah, millions of dollars. So I'm I'm gonna start a fund. <laughs> You know, to quote Snoop Dogg from WrestleMania, yeah. "Ooh, Grandma's gonna be mad you done broke her table." Yeah, uh, no, I'm telling you, I'm gonna start a fund, and we're gonna give it to Table, so that he doesn't have to continuously watch his offspring be destroyed. Poor Tony the Table. Yeah. So, so Kevin poor Dry Tony out there doesn't have a dinner table anymore because of these sons of bitches. Yeah, it's exactly. very sad. And to dry your thoughts on this opening soiree, if you will. I loved it because it's adding intensity to the swerve versus uh, Samoa Joe match. Yeah. Uh, just and, and Samoa Joe got some comeuppance. Yep. To pay for what he did to swerve uh, last week. So yeah. uh, I'm excited uh, to see more of this later on in the show. No spoilers, but uh, something's going to happen. <laughs> Lord Ryan Rich, your turn, my friend. It was certainly an interesting way to start off your show. Um, I almost wondered if footage would be first, just as a get it out of the way. Yeah. Um, but it was it was nice to see this happen and to... Like Canada Dry said, further build the tension between the two leading up to Dynamite. So, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Mr. Isaacs, your turn, my friend. I thought it was really good. Um, I, I thought that something that I think is missing a lot of times in uh, big AEW angles is like a real personal blood feud kind of yeah. take on it. And uh, I like to see that they're doing that now. Yeah. You know, so, you know, Swerve gets busted open last week and then this week he comes out and attacks Joe and uh, I like it. I, I like the fact that they're building up this blood feud. Yeah. So it's going to be a very violent match at the pay-per-view. I'm looking forward to that. All right. So we're going to flash back to um, well, Trent's turn on Cassidy. And he whispers something into Chris Statlander's ear. We're not really sure what he said. I'd like to think he said something like, potatoes are good. Or, I like Cheetos. You know, something like that. But unfortunately... Well, maybe just, why don't you just love all the wrestling? Yeah. I, I, think, I think he said, will you please take mom home? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> 
So maybe he's trying to turn. Is he trying to? Is he trying to turn uh, Statlander evil too? Yep. I mean, maybe. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. Renee is backstage. She talks about uh, she's in front of Orange Cassidy's locker room. Uh, either we're going to get a match or we're going to get some kind of response, but something is going to happen on a Friday pertaining to Orange Cassidy. Whoopie doo. Let's go to our second match. My God, it's Edge. It's Penta L0 for the TNT Championship. Here's some of my notes. Fantasy booking ain't for video games anymore, ladies and gentlemen. You got Okada. You got Osprey. You got Edge. And Edge is getting to fight people we have never seen him fight before and never thought in a million years we would ever see this. I like the Penta Blue Uni. Really cool. I, I thought it I thought it was pretty awesome. Shades uh-huh. of the blue blazer. Yeah, shades of yeah, kind of reminds you of a little bit of the blue blazer. He even had the blue mouth guard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Penn, uh, has early he's, on. He's, he's, he's stealing it from uh, Mr. Isaacs here, who, who <laughs> wears the blue shades, yeah. the blue hat, the blue shirt. Yep. I think yeah, I think yeah. you got a, I think you got a beef with uh, El Pete. I, I am the big blue member of this program yeah. for sure. All I can think of now is the Blue Man Group, and then <laughs> are they still together? Are they still doing this thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah they have a show in Vegas. That I'm gonna do. come out here one day, and I'm just gonna be going. <laughs> <laughs> in my all blue get up. Are you gonna paint the face blue? Then is that? You... Yeah, <laughs> I might. Or I'll just put one of my hoodies over my head completely. You know what? You'll just end up looking like uh, the blue meanie if you do the blue. And then you put the sunglasses over the hoodie. Yeah, (laughs) that's what you do. That's what I need to do. Oh, yeah. Or a blue mask, right? Yeah. 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 If I could find a suitable one that would match the uh, the UK blue attire. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can hit up old El Penta. Seems like he's got one. Yeah. Yeah. I I can team up El Penta and Blue Tista. Yeah. (laughs) To be my trio's team. I like it. We get to the end of the match. Edge gets to win, of course, because, you know. He's Edge. No, Adam Copeland. (laughs) Adam Copeland, sorry. Uh, And then the lights go out. There's Julia Hart, Brody King uh, uh, with the beatdown. Out comes Willow. Whew, man, Canada Dry, second match of the night. Your thoughts, my friend? I thought this was a really – this match was longer <laughs> than the WrestleMania matches of uh, the Usos and LA Knight and uh, <laughs> and um, what's his name AJ Styles. Yeah. This uh, this match was longer than 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 uh, maybe not both of them put together, but well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was an entertaining match. I liked it. Um, a good way to start the show. Um, Adam Copeland, uh, he's he's a legit star, so it's a good person to to start the show. And uh, Pente Alzero Miro, he's he's a great uh, he's a great hand. So yeah. uh, I think that uh, it, was, it was a good match to start the show. And uh, I love the back. I love the the after match stuff because no one expects Willow to come out. Yeah, um, to make the save. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Gave uh, gave uh, Adam enough time to recover because he's pulling her off off of uh, Julia. So I thought it was great. Awesome. Well, Ryan Rich, your thoughts, my friend? Second like match. Yeah, it was a fun match. Um, <clears throat> you don't you like they said you didn't ever think that you would see Adam Copeland versus Penta El Saramieda. Like that's just a match you didn't think that you would see. And Penta has pedigree. Like, he's been a world champion all around the world. Like, the guy knows how to get it done. He's been a tag team champion, a six-man champion within AEW in its own right. So I think that it's, like, a really good, uh, like, their styles mix well together. It was was fun to watch. Um, As for the after stuff, um, I I could see Willow coming because of Julia being there. I, I thought it was weird that Julia was there to begin with. Yeah. So with her being there, I kind of thought Willow came down. And then once she came out, I my mind already jumped to like next week. All right, on the go home show, they're going to have a mixed tag team match. And that's exactly what they're going to do in Indianapolis, Indiana. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be it's going to be a fun match on the go home show. So I'm excited. I thought it, all overall, the whole uh, match and the shenanigans afterward was uh, pretty fun. Awesome. Mr. Isaacs. 
yeah i thought this was a damn good match uh this is kind of the uh the tnt titles become kind of like the workhorse title these days um yeah. it was the uh what was it, the international or whatever but now i think uh, this one's kind of overtaken that um yeah i mean adam copeland you know for for a guy who's like 50 years old to work a match that long and that brutal hats off to him yeah. and uh yeah I, I dug the uk blue for uh for penta el zero yeah yeah, would have been nice if he'd done like the West Virginia colors, the dark blue and the yellow. Ah, we don't need that shit. Yeah. <laughs> UK blue is what we need. Yeah. So we go to Renee. It reminds me of, uh, um, what's that? We don't need no stinking badgers. <laughs> uh, I love you, HF. That movie is just so awesome. That movie is Welcome so Welcome to yeah. Spatula City, where we sell spatulas. No, I, I love the, um, remember the funeral home ad? Yeah. Like, they're like, hey, come and grieve your dead loved one and check out our new salad bar. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. That's like the most crazy off the wall irreverent movie but it made me love weird al yeah and that's where yeah. uh where uh kramer gets his big start yeah he's stanley the janitor with the big ass mop yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> good times i'm thinking of the color <laughs> uh, i might have to look that up and watch it now it's been too long yeah i watched it a couple of years ago yeah i got it digitally and Anytime I, anytime I imbibe in uh, Mother Nature, mm -hmm. <laughs> I watch that movie and it just gets that or Grandma's Boy are the two movies I watch yes. when I'm when I'm commuting with nature. Yeah. I think that's a, that. Those are a couple of very good picks for that kind of activity. Oh yeah, know? I mean, <laughs> yeah, guys, guys, we have a breaking, we have a breaking, sure. we have a breaking news thing right here. Uh -oh. oh boy, Caleb oh, wants his ex girlfriend back. Oh, oh, Caleb. Now, oh, Cody did win. Yeah. So, finish the story, hopefully Caleb. She, hopefully, <laughs> she keeps her word and uh, gets back together with him. Because finish like, the story, hey, Caleb. Yeah, finish take it all, Garden. And and you you get something else other than the endless salad you, and bread. And you make sure there's breadsticks on that table at all times. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All times. <laughs> that thing should not be barren. And and you don't order chicken fingers. <laughs> no, no chicken fingers, man. Get a steak, damn it. If yeah. he's at Olive Garden pasta, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, Olive Garden, get some pasta. You can get spaghetti yeah. and big ass meatballs. That's fine. But if you're at a steakhouse, you get a steak. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you get chicken fingers at a steakhouse. It's like kissing <laughs> your cousin. At a and if you, if they've got a surf and turf option, yeah, that's preferable. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, anyways, we go backstage with Renee. She has no stake, but she does have Hook, Jericho, and Shibata. Um. So Jericho decides to plan out the entire match. Oh, it's fruit cat! Woo! I got a cat. <laughs> they, What's up, uh, fruit cat? They fruit cat. He lays out this plan. And there's two things that come across my mind. One is who, how bad did Jericho piss off Tony Khan that this is how we're celebrating the twilight of his career? And then the second one was did Shibata lose his translator when they just when Tony Khan was telling him this match? No. Like hey, you're gonna be in a three, you're gonna be in a six man match. You're gonna be with Hook and Jericho. Oh, you're an interpreter. I don't know where he's at. And Shabazz like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for Shabazz. He got to, he had to be. Tony Khan said, "No worries, no worries. Mucho yen, mucho yen." Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, mm. <laughs> I, "You know what? Let's just discuss. I don't want to call each other out. Let's let's just talk about this monstrosity." This was more awkward and uncomfortable than The Rock and Cody Rhodes on Monday Night Raw. Oh, I God. didn't see that. It was awkward. It was a 50-minute long promo. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. Like, was a third of the show? 
Yes. Yeah. Like wow. Yeah. With, like when you're at a when you're at a, a a dinner with multiple couples, and there's that one couple that just don't talk to each other, nice. and they won't look at each other or even acknowledge that they exist together. And you're like, this is the most awkward dinner I've oh, ever wow. had in my life. That's how this promo was. It was. Awful. Can you ask uh, Sarah if she can pass the salt? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, we go to a hype video for the Bucks and FTR match. And then we get backstage with Renee. And I feel like whoever wasn't on TV was part of this interview at some point. Like it seemed like everybody was there, but we get uh we get Willow and Edge is gonna go against Brody King and Julia. I, I, what I do want to talk about is how unworthy we are of Stokely Hathaway. Oh, <laughs> we proceed to apologize to Eddie Kingston for saying that he smelled like Newports and, and Burger, Burger King. King. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad mix-up. <laughs> That's the best stuff I've ever heard about life, bro. Oh, my God. Oh. Stokely Hathaway has got to be the R-Truth of AEW. This guy is hilarious. Why they didn't let him do this earlier or even in WWE is beyond me. I want him to become like, as he gets older, the funny version of Teddy long. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm like, saying. like he's going to be like in 2045 and tonight you're going to face Darby Allen. <laughs> That'd be awesome, dude. I can see it now. Print the money. I think he could yeah, be any older. He could do that. He could be the GM making jokes like tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Oh, Make him the GM and then ha- and then have him force himself to do commentary. Yes. <laughs> I'm the GM. I get to do commentary whenever I want. I'm the GM. Yeah. I'm the GM. Damn it. <laughs> we go wow. to the next segment, which is the Young Bucks. Um, I, I want to talk about the promo and then we'll talk about the video secondly so we'll do the first part first uh they're hyping the tag match um really pushing on the whole all-in situation and how they felt you know because i mean let's face it out of the four matches they've already had the bucks only won once and that was the first time they lost the last three in a row so i mean I thought they said this was going to be number four. This is that they lost the last two. Okay, so they lost the last two in a row. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's important for story purposes. So, I think it is hugely important for story purposes. I think it has to establish the fact that the Bucks need this, and the just douchiness, overall douchiness. Of their promo and how they talked about putting on the EVP cap, and you know, it is absolutely brilliant. This made our minds brilliant. were distracted. We could focus on this match. Uh, <laughs> like we were, we were, we were busy worried about all this stuff backstage, and you guys took advantage of us. Oh yeah, <laughs> like it was so douchey and so perfect. Canada, Johnny, your thoughts on on the box promo? Yeah, I thought it was great. I, I think like it, it was a good way to not. To just kind of make it the main issue rather than the the surveillance altogether. Yeah, like this is this is why we lost is because we had to deal with this. Yeah, and and this is your buddy. Yeah, and I love how I love how they said that the the FDR was behind it, and they're like, "Well, we can't say that. Do you can't make it through?" Like, okay, cut, cut. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, to Lord Ryan Rich. Your thoughts on the promo? Yeah, I, I loved it. Um, I'll take a slightly different approach, though. I feel like, yeah, it's an easy way out. But I feel like what with Matt said, there was probably a lot of truth in that. I'm sure that while they're at the biggest show they've ever had and your biggest draw gets in a fight with one of your pillars right before your match, it probably does throw you off. It probably does screw you up mentally even, you know, regardless of, you know, whether FTR is going to win the match or not, there's something there. Like, I, I, 
I could see under the layers and I can read between the lines on what he's doing there and trying to, to integrate it back. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I thought that was awesome. Yeah. I imagine that um, it definitely would suck the joy out of what you're trying to do. Yeah. 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 It's hard to get into a match when you realizing that, one of your biggest free agents is a complete and utter asshole. But it's not even just the match. It's like, this is our biggest show we've ever done. If if something comes out about this, could it ruin our company? You're not even just thinking about the match. You're thinking about the rest of your life as someone who built this thing. Yeah. So to, to me, it carried a lot of weight. And I really, really loved how, yeah, we're going to make this the issue and it's a scapegoat, but I'm telling you the truth right here. Like I loved it. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Isaacs. I'm a big fan of using real life heat and real life issues to help a storyline. Yeah. And I think that if they're going to do this and use this on television, I'm glad this is the route they went. Yeah. Because it does make sense and it does give them a kind of heel alibi of well, you mentally, your your buddy mentally distracted us and then you took advantage and beat us. Yeah. You know, so like, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I, I think that that they should work off of this. I think they should have worked off of this many, many months ago when the guy was still there yeah. <laughs> and made money off of it. Yeah. Um, but at least they're using it the right way. I, I was really concerned when I saw they were using this because I was like, oh God, this is going to, which I mean, I guess we'll get to the actual video in a moment, but uh yeah. You know, I, as a storytelling mechanism, I like the fact that they use this. I, th- I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. So the video they show is actual backstage footage. We see CM Punk. Uh, so, it's, you know, we see Jack Perry in the back. CM Punk walks up to him. They kind of talk. It's getting more and more aggressive the way they're talking. Punk shoves and then goes after Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. They finally get pulled apart, and that was it. And, and I mean, I it, it is what it is. I mean, it proves a point, you know, that there was a reason why Punk got fired, and, and the fact remains that this is Punk. This is who Punk is. I guarantee you, this is not the first or the second time he's had an altercation backstage. Well, we know it's not. Yeah. Teddy Hart yeah, doesn't want to do a fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Teddy Hart got in a fight with Punk? Yeah, yeah. Teddy Hart uh, told a story about getting into a fight with Punk when they both worked for TNA. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, can I draw your thoughts on the video? Um, I think it, you know, it, it would have been nice to have audio, but I don't think their audio, audio exists, so they would have played it. Yeah. Um, um, or legal wouldn't let them. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. Yeah. Um, it just shows, like, to- uh, pretty much shows uh, Jack Perry just talking. Yeah. Just kind of sticks his finger in his hair, and and uh, and we don't know what he said, but something he said really pissed off Punk, and Punk yeah. just went at him. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I don't think this is my thoughts. I don't care what you say. I, you are never going to have power over me where I'm going to do something stupid and punch you. Yeah. Like, self-control thing. I, I, like I will always control myself. I'm like, I, I will always use my words. I'm never going to strike anyone because there's something they say to me. Yeah. It's just very just honorable. Yeah. yeah. Very honorable. I'm too old to scrap. My days of punching people in the face is over with. <laughs> You're a peaceful man. Canada. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'll just roll over them at this point. That's all I got left. <laughs> just, hey, lay down. I'm going to roll over you and we'll call it a day. Yeah. About that. Well, my whole point is like, why would, like, why would I want to drag my name and my integrity down to the lowest common denominator? Yeah. When you're the one who's, if you, you know, you're the one saying the shit, it sounds like there's, it's more of a problem with you than with me. Yeah. Absolutely. Lord Ryan Rich, your thoughts on the video? Yeah, um, I, you know, the, the footage was, how it was used, I think, is beneficial to AEW, um, especially after 
CM Punk being on Hawani show and basically spilling tea and doing this and that. And I think they were very careful in what they showed, how much they showed, um, what they said leading up to it. Um, but it's definitely, I think this is, one of my favorite parts of the whole thing is Matt Jackson wearing the scapegoat shirt. Yeah. And I think, I think this is how we get Jack Perry back and I think he's going to join the elite. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Isaacs. So I kind of have mixed feelings about this. Um, I have mixed feelings in the sense of that. I like the fact that they're using this as a storytelling mechanism, but at the same time, I also think it's going to blow back on them a little bit uh, yeah. because when the Bucks came out, fans started chanting CM Punk. You don't want them chanting the name of a guy who's on the other show. Yeah. Like, I just don't think that's a good idea. I really yeah. don't. And um, so, I mean, I kind of have mixed feelings here. As far as the actual footage itself, I mean, <laughs> this wasn't, you know, a massacre. This wasn't like a Pier 6 brawl or anything. I mean, this was just kind of a, a little schmoz. And, yeah, the uh, box even said so. Yeah, I mean, I I think it, it, you know, Noob says in the chat he finds the footage underwhelming. I kind of felt the same way. I didn't think it was as big of a deal as people made it out to be. Yeah. Um, I, I think they should have used the story uh, in a promo, but I'm not sure they should have shown the video. Yeah. Because when you send out Edge or Adam Copeland on TV last week to talk about this big unity speech, and let's just let's just everybody enjoy wrestling and love each other and say kumbaya. And then you do this next week. I, I don't know. I, it just I, I could see this blowing back a little bit negatively on them. I just I, like I said, I have mixed feelings on it. Part of me liked just, it, part of me didn't. I just want to retort real quick before you go, JFP, about one part um, about um, them chanting CM Punk's name. Not yeah. even four days ago or six days of five. Five days ago on Pat McAfee's show, Cody Rhodes is on there. They're not doing anything but chain MJF's name. So, like, it happens back and forth. So, I think you're getting a little bit of both because they're starting to become more intertwinedness between the two. You're seeing people go from one to the other and back, you know, and so forth. I, so, I, I, I think they wanted MJF to go to WrestleMania. I think that's what yeah. I mean. well, Of course MJF. people do. But I'm just saying, but do you think they want him to go, but... If WWE knows that he's not, do you think they want his name being shouted out on a program that favors them? Probably not. Nope. That's, well, so what, to me, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. At the same time, though, Punk's name has not been chanted on AEW TV in quite a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was tonight for the first time in a long time. So they've opened a Pandora's box here, and I just mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going to work out. out. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be that, like, if there's blowback, I think it's because the video is so underwhelming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't it think it's going to be right. underwhelming. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be like, oh, there are bitches for doing this. Like, yeah, so what? WWE fans are going to say that anyways. Yeah. <laughs> or WWE tribalism. I don't mind WWE fans, so let me clarify. I think the Young Bucks just simply wanted people to see something to show that they're not just out here making stuff up. Sorry, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. All right. So here comes FTR. Uh, they look pissed off. They are pissed off. So um, this is becoming a blood feud. I love it. Uh, I, I like the fact that they uh, mentioned uh, uh, Dax shaving Cash's back. <laughs> Backshave.com! <laughs> That's what I wrote in my notes. Backshave.com. I mean, if you just join the, the class, 40 bucks a month, you don't have to worry about shaving your tag team partner's back. Someone else will do it for you. You know, mm, right? Um. Yeah, they. You know, they they mentioned the Bucks went from caring to being selfish. Um, Canada Dry, your thoughts on the on the promo? Yeah, I, I like. I love the whole thing, like between the Bucks and and FDR. Yeah. Um, you know, they're pretty much saying like you know, stop being immature brats. And they're not, they're, they're, they're saying we love AEW. You guys don't, you guys are just EVPs. You don't love AEW like we do. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're showing their allegiance to AEW, but also, uh, you know, taking a shot at the Bucks as well. Yeah, absolutely. 
What, Ryan Rich? Yeah, uh, I mean, it was definitely very fiery and impassioned, and you would figure no less, seeing as though they are friends of CM Punk, and seeing as though uh, the Young Bucks kind of implicated that maybe it was their idea to begin with. Yeah. So that's like, you definitely have to come out and address it. And so I enjoyed the fervor and the passion that they used. Um it was it was a hell of a segment all the way around. Uh, I was thinking about something here. Uh, I lost it though. I'm done for now. Okay, Mr. Isaacs. I really really appreciate that Cash Wheeler was wearing a Bart Simpson shirt. Guys, and, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that I had a shirt just like that when I was a little kid. Now I've got I'm a huge Simpsons fan. I got about ten Simpsons T-shirts, but I'm pretty sure I had that particular one when I was like literally a kid. Yeah, yeah. was this the one that says "Don't eat"? Uh, don't have a cow or eat my something like that. Them. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It says <laughs> I'm part something, <laughs> something like that. It's a very old school Simpsons T-shirt, but mm. uh, you know, I thought the promo was great. Uh, I like that they came out and they were angry, and you know, again, this just has a personal feel to it. Now, yeah. it's not just a wrestling match; it feels personal. That's yeah. what they need to do with this. Mm-hmm. They need to have more of a personal feel make you feel something emotionally yeah because you know say what you want about wwe but that big main event angle i mean you could cut the emotion with a knife Mm -hmm. it makes the match if the match is not great as far as physical and and the the moves and everything you can make up for it with the storytelling element but if you could combine the two as i think they're doing here You've got a recipe for success here. So I like that they're doing this. And the tag yeah. belts are on the line, too. Yeah. All right. As First ever three-time champion. Uh, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, FTR, I, I found kind of like a different angle within it, like another layer underneath. They were kind of like, they're saying that, yeah, the Bucks are caring. They did all this. You talk about uh, without us, we all these hundreds of people wouldn't have jobs and all this. But FTR is painting the Bucks as like false messiahs. Mm-hmm. And they're painting themselves they're like, well, if you don't want to do it, we'll be the guys. We'll be the saviors of a new revolution. FTR. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll go to Osprey on the ramp with Renee. He asked for five minutes of TV because let's be honest. TV time is expensive, expensive, bro. It costs money, bro. <laughs> uh, you know, he shoots down the rumor that he hates the grind. Then he starts bragging about his airline miles guy could probably fly around the world for free at this point uh but takes a huge shot at triple h which i thought was absolutely ballsy the sickest bird bro on um, that show television. it was ballsy it was very ballsy yeah and, uh, he is in fact the ace of aew and to be but honest he kind of proved that you know it so he's like i'll get my boxing gloves out uh, God. i mean it wasn't even a veiled shot. Like he just, he might as well just said that and then go f you know f. Well, you. Let's, 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 let's clarify here. Yeah, Triple H made the first shot. No, yeah, yeah. Just it's back. a retaliation. Yeah, and it was awesome. <laughs> oh, it was so sweet. It was so. <laughs> it's so much. Nice. To me, so. to me, this is what it's like for Triple H. Uh, yeah. It's like it's like. Uh, a guy goes after the prettiest girl and uh, asks her for a date. Yeah. And she says no. He feels rejected. Yeah. So he's like, well, she's ugly anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is like, right? He starts Classic talking shit about her. Classic yeah. sour grapes. Yeah. Let's go to our third match. Oh, man. <laughs> we got Hook. How do I know? Because they, I agree with your dog. I I dog was pissed off at this match. Hey, squirrel, we're not talking about it. He says, Fuck Hook and Jericho. Tiffany can translate that, by the way. She now, is dogs, the whisperer. now, guys, the Steiners weren't in this match. Okay, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> but was the Arsenio Hall dog pound in this match? <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, for those of you old enough to remember that, 
Arsenio Hall. Oh, Arsenio Hall. Yeah, I mean, I love that show. Arsenio Hall oh, was, yeah. was such an epic show. Oh, oh yeah. He had a lot of wrestlers on. I know. Savage, no, warrior. Yeah, warrior. Yeah, yeah, future president of the United States on there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he had Bill Clinton before yeah. the, yeah. He that, played like, the saxophone on Arsenio Hall. Awesome. Yeah. But the fact that he book. had Hulk Hogan and made Hulk Hogan lie. Yeah. Brilliant. He was also big in the Millie Vanilli scandal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because he was he was he was making jokes about them before it came out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's go to our so we got Hook, Jericho, and Shibata. Dear Lord for Shibata. They're taking on Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, and uh Anthony Ogogo. Here's some of my notes. Ogogo doesn't want any part of Jericho. Uh, great Huracurana by Jericho. Uh, it's my dog. It's the JFP. dog's name is Squirrel. Squirrel, yep. He has a squirrel named Dog, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, he has a moose named Squirrel. <laughs> yes. So uh, Shibata tags in and uh, destroys Jericho's strategy. Uh, Hook eats the clothesline. Shibata is a machine. He's killing his own partners. Uh, Jericho and, Har- and Hook are arguing, and then Shibata loses. <laughs> and so <laughs> let's go to Mr. Isaacs. Mr. Isaacs, third match of the night. What's well, poetic about this, yeah. Mr. Isaacs? To bring it full circle. To the topic at hand that we've been discussing throughout this entire entire segment, it is dog shit. Mm-hmm. See what I did there? <laughs> I think we should do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll, the we'll, just, we'll do that. We'll bring the dog pound back. It's the Arsenio Hall show. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, but yeah, th- this was absolute dog shit, man. Like I, Jericho. <sighs> Why why is he still calling himself Lionheart and pretending he's it's nineteen ninety five? Like why are we doing this? <laughs> but a Lionheart works good for like a twenty year old something kid. Yeah. yeah. Not a fifty year old something. You're man. not a Lionheart when you're fifty. Yeah. It's like, been thirty years on, since you were Lionheart. Just drop it. Just, like you're not oppressing anybody. Jericho, anymore. I've got a plea. Please, please quit stealing the spotlight. From these young guys and go away for a while. Yeah. Just go away for a while. Until what what if he's leaning else. into this character too? <sighs> of being that like I think that's what he's doing here. If we think about it. I think yeah. he's leaning into the guy who's trying to help the young guys and just being a prick about it. Yeah. And causes them to lose and then turns on them and then has a match with them and then rinse or peat, rinse or peat with another guy. <laughs> I mean, that's becoming well, I mean, the character. It's not a good idea for a character. It's not a good idea for a character at all. No, he needs to go away for a while until he figures out something better. He could come back as a surprise and like challenge the body and have a big match or something like this. Just like this I didn't sucks. mind Le Champion being called that. Yeah, I, I don't either. mind just being Chris Jericho. And yeah. he's not coming at the Judas, and that was like one of the only things that really got him over with the crowd for a while. The Judas like, song is still cool. I yeah. don't care what anyone says. I mean, he just he just needs to go away for a while. Like I I'm sick of him at this point. <laughs> or even you know what? Just go on Ring of Honor. Yeah, sure. Go you on Ring of be, Honor and go wrestle on Ring of Honor. Try and bring those guys up. Yeah. I mean, you could probably spike a, a few Honor Club subscriptions by putting yeah. Jericho exclusively on there for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that idea. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Call, Tony Khan, you heard it. Uh, Chris Jericho has been traded to Ring of Honor. <laughs> Tony Khan, we know you're listening. So, yeah. Hey, <laughs> Dry, your thoughts on the third match? Candid Dry. Oh. Well, I pretty much already said it all. Okay, well, let's go to Rich. <laughs> I mean, Rich. He pretty much already said it all. I mean, okay, we can move. Yeah, on. like we co- we scared. covered it by the time it got to me. Me and me and Isaac's were talking. So, <laughs> As so I, was there, I, was like, I thought you were not going to Rich there. Sorry. I, and I like what they got to say. <laughs> Damn, we got it. So uh, Renee's in the back with Dustin. Surprise! Joe is healthy. 
It's medically clear to wrestle. Uh, Dustin has nothing to lose. We move on to our fourth match. It's Okada. And you're wondering. Okay. We get, uh, we get, yeah, we're supposed to say band. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, band, band. Yeah, I just saw them last year. It was amazing. Ugh. Oops, band. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. You get Okada and you're figuring, man, we're going to see the Continental Bell on the line. He's probably going to wrestle somebody good. No. We have this guy. We call him Intern Argento, and uh, he is mostly <laughs> – Scrubbing toilets for us and the effing studios. And I, I, I yeah. wonder where he was today. I was wondering because I walked in and the toilets weren't sparkling and I couldn't eat off the floor and I was kind of pissed off. And I'm walking around going in, turn and you know, Argento, where the and I turn on the TV and that's where he is. He's fighting Okada. Well, you know what? From now on, Bad Kate Kate is in charge of the toilets. Uh, yeah. yeah. I like it. He better be good scrub Kate if he's going to do that. Especially after a long night of partying in the F. Oh. <laughs> you know how much the line goes to Hooters afterwards, so we definitely oh. need someone good. Yeah, <laughs> like like those those uh those beer and wing poops. Those those are nasty. <laughs> those are bad, dude. Those can get you. They yeah. can get you. Get the sneak up on you. <laughs> Especially if you get the like super hot sauce. Yeah, that's right. If you're not going mild, your butt is not thanking you in you the morning. Fucking like butthole fire sauce or something. You need <laughs> dude wipes. Is what you need? Dude now, wipe. The important thing uh, is to stay away from the hot hot wings. Yeah. yeah. Because you just don't feel them going in. You feel those going out. Oh well, yeah. And all the way down in between. <laughs> you haven't you haven't lived until you've tried to digest Nashville hot chicken. Um, it's ridiculous. I like, love Nashville chicken. Uh, <laughs> it'll now, warm the cockles of your heart. Now, uh, in yeah. my younger years, uh, my brother and I were babysitting. Yeah, and uh, he had happened to have a jar of jalapenos. Mm. Yeah. And, and this kid was, he was, he was like, I think he was like 13 or something. And we said, we'll give you a dollar for every jalapeno in that jar that you eat. <laughs> so I think he ended up, ended up eating the whole jar because he was like, he's like, look at all this money I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you that next morning, he was screaming <laughs> on the toilet. <laughs> Uh, I can imagine. Oh, the lesson like that we learn along the way. This match took entirely too long. <laughs> this match That's why we're talking crazy. about shitting. <laughs> and uh, they shit the bed. He calls it. He calls out Pac. And says uh, he accepts for Dynasty. Of course, that means. See you later. Uh, Have a good night, Cindy. Thanks for stopping hey, by. Hey, and then uh, calls up Hawk. He accepts for Dynasty. The bastard is here. Then the Bucks come in with the shenanigans. Then FTR comes in with the shenanigans. Can the drive fourth match of the night? Uh, which match is this one? Uh, Okada versus our intern. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, this was this was a squash match. So yeah. Uh, Oh, sorry, a squish match. We got to get the yeah, the squish match. Um, yeah, this this was uh, this was some good shenanigans. Uh, you know, to kind of settle down that moment from kind of finish it off from last time. Yeah. So uh, I, I liked it. Okay, Lord Ryan Rich. Uh, I am convinced this whole match was put in there so Okada could speak English at a microphone, no. and I'm done. Okay. Mr. Isaacs. Yeah, I mean, it was all right for what it was. It was a, a showcase for Okada, a quick finish, squish match. Uh, get on the microphone and speak some fairly decent English. Yeah. Let's be honest here. Like, he did a pretty good job with this. Oh, yeah. And a uh, little schmoz at the end was pretty cool, too. I liked it. Uh, this is where I mentioned earlier the fans started chanting CM Punk when the Bucks came out. Um, but, yeah. I, I liked it for what it was. I mean, I'm you guys know I'm a huge Okada guy, so mm -hmm. I like pretty much anything he does. I'm very happy to see him here. All right. 
Oh, man. So, Supercard of Honor, Acclaimed Attack the Bang Bang Gang. They're backstage. Yeah. Let's go to Renee with the champagne toast. It's your women's, it's our women's champion. Timeless Tony Storm. So here comes the challenger. It's, of course, Thunder Rosa. And then uh, here comes the champ. And then she decides to toast her by tossing the, the, the uh, which is obviously water because champagne is not that clear, uh, <laughs> right to the eyes, then hits her with the plate, and then rubs her makeup off. And then Deanna comes in and tries to, for the save, obviously there's some animosity between Deanna and Thunder Rosa. Oh, my God. Canada Dry, your thoughts. You know, it's hard for me. Like, when you know that someone has been been a, a bit of a dick backstage. Yeah. Well, you kind of cheer when they get their ass kicked. It just happens. No. It's hard not to mix the, the shoot and the yeah. the the kayfabe you kind of blend them together and i'm like god beat that beat that ass <laughs> <laughs> it's hard like i don't think thunder rosa has become a bit enough of a baby face yeah. to be in this position to be cheer like make tony look like she's she's bad yeah right lord ryan rich yeah and to Canada dry's point that's exactly why she just like do stuff in her face and directly hit her in the face with a metal plate <laughs> because um, she had to wipe her makeup off. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, she had to garner some sort of sympathy for Thunder Rosa. Uh, I personally am not a Thunder Rosa fan. So I also enjoyed watching her get punched in the face. I thought it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a good segment. And then Deanna coming out, you know, and then the classic trope of I'm confused. I don't know if you're my friend or not. And then Deanna's like, F off, because they had to like bleep it. And then she walks out. And I was like, Ooh, girl, fight. Mitch, <laughs> you know what it kind of reminds me of in the cartoons when one of the, the, the heroes turns into a bad guy? Yeah. For like one episode? Yeah. Because they, their mind has been altered. Yep. Must fight it. Oh, must <laughs> not turn evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Mr. Isaacs. Yeah, I mean, this is all right for what it was. Obviously, it, it wasn't really much of a segment. I mean, it just, you know, Tony immediately jumped on her, beat the shit out of her. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was what it was. Uh, you know, Perrazzo comes out, makes the save. Like Rich said, they do the, the classic trope. Um, I, I would assume this is going to lead to her facing the winner of this or possibly a three-way match or something. I don't know, but uh, it was all right. All right, Jeremy, do you know why? I mean, sorry, Mr. Isaacs, do you know why this was such a short segment? What's up? Because TV time is expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> TV time is expensive, bro. So, uh, it actually leads into the fifth match of the night Mariah May versus Anna J. Here's some of my notes. Uh, I wish Anna J had a snowball chance in hell of winning this match. No. Like, hold, really on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah. This I gotta call this person out on this. <laughs> Joe Graham is better than Liam, and neither are on the show. <laughs> uh, hey, at least she's not like saying people from another podcast. So I'll give uh, him credit for that. At least yeah. they're still our people, right? She's so we're gonna have to let Liam know that Ayaka is talking shit. I'm like Liam, the Graham, Joe Graham is better looking. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, it's Chop Fest 2024 as they just chop the hell out of each other. Anna looks amazing. Uh, tell us for Anna. Then Anna decides to go ape shit, throws a Queen Slayer. And then uh, Shikawa, uh, Shikawa uh, is here for the save of her former best friend and partner and then gives her a lip on lip kiss. And everyone was confused. And everybody After was like, dark. What's going on? <laughs> I mean, I knew them because I watched Stardom, but I was the general group were like, who the hell is this person? You mm. know, like there was no uh, anyways, Canada Drive, fifth match of the night. I thought this was uh, surprisingly a good match. Yeah. I think Anna Jay looked really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, not just because she's hot, but because she was sure <laughs> wrestling has improved a bit. She yeah. she looked like she she she's uh, getting a little bit more fundamental. Yep. And uh, so this is this is this is balloons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> this is for the fireworks. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we need that at the start, at the before you introduce yourself every yeah. episode. Okay. Um, so yeah, I I I think that uh, they put on a good show, and it would have been nice to explain to the people who the hell this woman is. Yeah. Wow. Well, they know each did. Other. did he say why? How they know each other? I thought he said that she's a uh, an old uh, someone that an old associate from Stardom. I thought is what Excalibur said. Yeah, he said they were tag. Yeah. 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 You just have to listen to the commentary, which sometimes, if it's an exciting moment, can be an attraction. It's hard sometimes, and like if other things are going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm posting other things while the shows are going on. So. Yeah. Okay. World Ryan Rich fifth match. Uh. Honestly, like JFB, I know you said like if Anna J had a snowball's chance in hell. Well, after what happened with the whole Jarrah Hook Shibata thing, I was like, well, maybe Tony Khan's temporary loss is in mind. I don't know. And plus, this is the second time that they face in like like three weeks, four weeks. Yeah. So I was like, maybe there's shenanigans that happen, and Anna J actually does pick up a win. And like I, I was kind of worried going into it, but the match itself was really good. It was, yeah. I, I think almost any Mariah May match is good because she is good. Yeah. Anna J, on top of that, continues to get better and get better and yeah. gains more experience. And I, I like that they're showcasing her. You know, I think she can be a future star in a AEW uh, if she's given the opportunity. And I mean, they've given her a lot of opportunity so far, but I think she can go far. All right. Mr. Isaacs. To me, this is probably the best Anna J match that I remember seeing. Yeah. Mm. Like she was really good in this match. And uh I did think it was kind of funny when they were exchanging chops. Yeah. And Anna J looked like she was barely touching her, and then Mariah May like chopped her chest off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they they weren't matching each other's energy there. It was pretty funny. Uh -huh. But yeah. I mean, this was a good match. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Expert. Uh, yeah. Is it because Anna, uh, sorry, uh, Mariah May is that good that she's going to elevate Anna J a bit? Yeah. Is this that Bret Hart factor? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think Anna J legitimately did good work, but yeah. uh, Mariah May is a hell of a dance partner in there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she was really, really good. Um, that girl is, she's going to do some great things in the ring. Like, she's awesome. Um, but yeah, this was a very solid match. This was a much more competitive match and better match than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and, and I like the ending, you know, I, I like, uh, you know, Anna J kind of like, uh, going crazy at the very end. Like I thought that was cool. I didn't know who the stardom chick was. Neither did. Excalibur was the only person in that entire arena that knew who this chick was. <laughs> yeah. I promise you. And uh, somebody's uh, feeding it to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, well, uh, she was the opponent at Supercard of Honor. Okay. Yeah. That so I mean she was just on an AEW affiliated program not long for the, ago. For the ten thousand people that watch that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean I I might like to see the numbers on how many people watch that. Yeah. I, Including I the illegal streams. <laughs> well, I mean you can't account for those. Well, that's countless. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I thought it was a cool segment. Um, you know, this random chick coming out and, uh, giving her champagne and then kissing her. I was like, is this segment sponsored by Brazzers? Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody in the crowd was just so confused. Like, huh? What is this? I don't know we're, what's going we're, on. We're going to party, we're gonna party we're now, I guess. Sexual tendencies. What's going on with my family-friendly wrestling hour? <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Well, oh, yeah. watch him. Welcome to the family, family first wrestling hour. <laughs> the family that prays together stays together. Gosh yeah. darn it! That sounds like some like small town indie here in Kentucky. Like, yeah, yeah. Family first wrestling. It really does. It's oh, time time I want to see two women kissing when I'm jerking off in my bathroom. Not <laughs> I want to see two women kissing. I'll turn up the lights and turn on my iPhone. There you go. <laughs> All the heels are like different demons in the Bible, and like the final boss is like 
like the Antichrist. <laughs> every every night, the Jesus wrestler beats the Satan wrestler for the title. <laughs> I'm the new champion. Thank you, Jesus. And then you got Nicodemus in there. He's like a tweener. Yeah. Lucifer gets hit with a steel chair by Jesus. <laughs> Jesus off the top rope with the big elbow. Yeah. I see. I like Jesus as a as a as a luchador. See, <laughs> uh, you, you were gonna go muscular trapeze artist like in the uh, Talladega Nights. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think of Jesus as a muscular trapeze artist. <laughs> 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 I just watched that like a week ago. It is such a great movie. <laughs> oh my god! Or, or you got the Homer quote. I'm kind of like Jesus, but not in a sacrilegious way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Anyway. I kind of like to think of my Jesus as a rocker, and he's got like an angel choir band in the back. That's my favorite. Yeah. I want. I want. I'm hammer drunk. I want a shirt of Jesus giving Satan a sharpshooter. Oh, dude, you gotta make one. <laughs> there we go. Next design, F and wrestling shirt. Yeah, yeah. Sharpshooter in the middle of the ring. Satan's no tapping. Right? And sure. then no, and then on the side you put that, and then on the side you put just keep fighting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a just keep do fighting. it. That's got to be a shirt. We, yeah, I I don't know if Haney can do this. I don't uh, know if can do head. this. I could try. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, dude, a sharp but shirt. dude, you'd have to put the just keep fighting on the side of it, bro. Oh, cool. oh no, at least they just keep fighting and Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's cool too. Dude, that would be a very badass t shirt. Yeah. And I that think it would cool. cross over. I think a lot of people that haven't heard our show, if they stumbled upon that, would buy it. Yeah, and you just have the little all F and wrestling uh flame logo on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I like it. We got a winner. Yeah, I think this, we we mind melded a t shirt. <laughs> we did. I know, right? <laughs> we just <laughs> we'll get mind melded. Now, now we, we just have to get uh, uh, either JP, I don't know, or, or Alex Haney to, 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 to birth it to life. Yep. All right. Give birth to that, JFB. I'm working on it. A guy, a guy ran down. <laughs> <laughs> we go to Mercedes Monet. She's in the back hyping her first match that she's going to have at double or nothing. So we got about a month and a half of her not doing jack shit, except <laughs> interviews and coming out to the CEO. Um, she gives Julia and Willow their flowers. Then she talks about her injury. She hates losing. And, and then the, she gets assaulted in the dark. I have two things that came to mind when I'm watching this one the guy who's running the camera (laughs) (laughs) it's assaulted in the dark someone turn on the lights (laughs) I'm being assaulted her her moaning turn on the lights it sounds like having an orgasm It literally. Oh my goodness! It reminded me of a comedy where someone's like, "I'm getting beat up, somebody!" Help. Like it reminded me of a uh, Austin Powers where the guy was like, "I'm still alive. I'm just badly burned." <laughs> Will Ferrell. Yeah. You could- the wound, it's beginning to smell a little like almonds. That's a bad thing. <laughs> Who sent you number two? Who does number two work it. for? <laughs> Oh, oh gosh, man. we have a lot of fun on this show. <laughs> Give it hell. Ken, draw your thoughts on Mercedes Monet. <laughs> Can it dry? Oh, sorry. Like you said, <laughs> uh yeah, I love this. Like they're they're setting like the house of black. Yeah, is, they are so badass. Yeah. Like you know, this is the house of black, doing it. Who else could be it? Like like she's like already looking past Willow. Yeah. Willow done got sprayed in the face, bro. Yeah. I don't think this is Willow. I don't know. If it is, this is that's some good storytelling. Yeah. If that's it, if this is Willow. Yeah. It comes out that this is Willow. That's it's amazing. too obvious if it's Julia. 
I think you go with the obvious until you learn it's not, right? Could like be it. Sky Blue. Yeah. There you go. Ooh, could be. Oh, Sky Blue, that's true. Or maybe it's her old friend, Soraya. I'm still upset that we're not getting a match with her until double or nothing. I know. <laughs> It's, it's kind cool. of boring to hear just keep talking on about being the CEO yeah. and all this and another. Like, and we understand your feelings were hurt when you got hurt. We're sorry. Yeah, can we like, do something thing. more? Oh like, I know you're getting paid a lot of money, so that's why you're getting put on TV. But, like, come out with something different, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Do something different like you do with your Hey, I don't want, I'm a child of the 80s. Dude is my vocabulary. Well, I, think, I, think, I think I'm going to call uh, her dude from now on because he That's cool. <laughs> Mercedes the dude, Monet. Uh, <laughs> oh, the CEO the man. Hey, dude. CEO dude. The dude. <laughs> She's the dude. Uh, no, we will not man. disrespect the big Lebowski in such a way. No it's, way. It's no their version of the man. We will dude. not do that. No, we're calling her the dude. No, we're gonna call her "Hey, dude." Just like I, I can get down on that. Nickelodeon needs rebranding at this point. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, about like <laughs> major <laughs> league. <laughs> oh my god! Hey, oh. Now, now, did you ever meet this guy? Dan I've Snyder. never, I've never met him. No, you've been in the same area as him. <laughs> I mean, like I, I mean, to be honest with you. I'm not surprised because I've watched some of his shows and it's like overtly sexual. Like mm. in no way. He's shape, clearly no. got a, a toe fetish. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh geez. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, he's he's after dark. <laughs> <laughs> these were these were freaking uh, young teenagers. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't heard a lot about this, but I, it sounds pretty fucked up from what I have heard. Yeah, it is worth it is worth a watch. Uh, yeah. What is it called? It's called um, and Quiet on Set. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to watch it because I'm very much of the Nickelode. Well, my yeah, it, like, I, I, didn't that, of, but, I didn't watch a lot of the Nickelodeon. Like I like shows. I said, I know Dan Snyder from Head of the Class. Yeah, that's where I know Dan Snyder from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I didn't even know he created. No, he didn't I create mean, it. He was he was the fat kid on it. No, no, no. He, he helped create the show. Yeah. Oh, he was that innovative of that. Yeah. He, that's why he was such a focus on the, of the story. If you know, if you remember watching it, it was always about his trying to overcome, like trying to be the best or whatever, like trying to fight himself. He was kind of one of those people that they actually did a character dive within the show quite frequently. So it's not surprising to me to hear that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Him and Brian Robbins, who played the tough guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, created the show, co created the show. So uh, back, back to wrestling. Back to wrestling. Let's go to our six match. Nice segue. Let's go to our six match, the main event Samoa Joe versus Dustin again. In case you missed it, that's what opened the show before Swerve. Here's some of my notes. Joe is selling that gimp limp. Like, he's just gimping his way down the ramp. Uh, Dustin looks really good. I, I'm really surprised. Um, he, he he got cut. He took, a, he took a header into the pole. He had a big gash on his head. The guy's bleeding like a stuck pig. Um, uh, 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 Joe is now stalking his prey. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we get a small Dustin comeback before he hits the arm of Samoa Joe. Um, great crossroads. I thought that was really good. Nice paying homage to his brother. Um, you know, Dirty Joe gets the belt, knocks out, knocks him out, gets the win, then puts him in the coquina clutch. Then Swerve comes back, kicks him in the head, kicks him out of the ring, grabs his chain back. Then we see Prince Nana hand him the belt. Joe is on the ramp. Security between them. Mayhem ensues. Joe is pissed. Because Swerve's living rent-free up here in Joe's head. Canada Dry, six, the final match. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah? I'm going to wax poetically. Do it. Oh. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my own shot. I'm going to wax poetic. Okay. Now... 
what I really love about this is you got you're gonna have three straight weeks of carnage between Swerve mm-hmm. and Samoa Joe. You got it last week, you got it this week, and there is no way in hell that Samoa Joe is taking this one dry. Yeah. No, he is going to come back with a vengeance next week. Yeah. At the go-home show. Yep. And Swerve's going to get his ass kicked. I call it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, I I just want to give uh, props to Dustin Rhodes. Uh, he did really good in this match. Yeah. Uh, he, that, 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 that cut looked pretty nasty. It looked like oh, it was yeah. pretty deep. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I hope he didn't need stitches for that one bit. But he was, yeah. They they, they did a great job. Uh, all props to Dustin Rhodes. Still, he still got it. Yeah, absolutely. How about uh, Lord Ryan Rich? Yeah, uh, can and dry. He doesn't need stitches. He needs the piece of head that was removed. <laughs> yes. Put piece of head put back in. That's what he needs. You just like put a piece that. of crazy glue in there and stick no. that in there. Yeah, put a mothball in there and it'll do something. But the match was ridiculous. Like he still got it is to say the least. Like this man put on a show and like to get color like that and to still be able to go and perform. And Dustin always tells the story with his matches. He always sells. He's always brings the passion. He brings the old school flavor feel too with trying to get the the uh, people involved by getting a chance going. Like you feel like you're watching a big indie show from the past when you watch Dustin Rhodes. And I love that. It's amazing. Um, as far as the shenanigans afterwards. Yeah. Let's it's, it's a buildup. Like let's make this something worthwhile for dynasty. I love the direction it's going. It's fantastic. Oh yeah. Mr. Isaacs. I certainly think it's no coincidence that, um, we have a Rhodes in the main event yeah. <laughs> of the dynamite immediately following mania. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think this was kind of a, uh, you know, everybody's hyped about his brother and his moment. Why don't you come see what he does against our champion in the main event? You know, it's kind of an interesting tactic. I'm curious if it'll uh, garner them a little more viewership this week. Yeah. Um, Dustin looks better in my opinion, in his fifties than he did in his thirties. Oh yeah. Like he is so good. He's a he, Dustin's well, always, in my opinion, been a very underrated worker. Like yeah. he is so good in the ring. Um, I mean, he he sells really well. His shots look stiff but safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I like his work, and I'd like to see yep. more of him in AEW. Uh Samoa Joe obviously is amazing. This was a really good match. I enjoyed it. Um the ending is kind of what I thought it'd be. You know, Joe wins and Swerve comes out and attacks him. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I figured was going to happen. And, uh, you know, it advances the storyline. And uh, I liked it. Don't have any complaints. All right. So this week, instead of video games, mm-hmm. we're going to do something a little bit different. Ooh. We're going to pick one of our favorite movies. Okay. okay. Are we going to narrow it down to a specific genre? No, you just name a movie and why oh you like it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know how many... No, no, know know what we're going to do. You know what it is. We're going to play Desert Island with the movie. So you pick a oh. movie that you're going to want to bring to the Desert Island. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll get down with that. Can and dry. You go first. All right. Um, so my match of the night. Um, I'm going with... Uh, Oh, this is this is a tough one. I think that I'm going with uh, this is this is a tough one. I think I'm going uh, Samoa Joe and uh, and Dustin. Okay. Uh, my favorite segment of the night is Will Frickin' Osprey putting the burn mm. on Triple H and volleying that back harder on him because. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't deserve that just because he didn't choose WWE. Yeah, there you go. I mean, bad. my movie um, that I'm picking. Um, we played Desert Island. A movie that I could watch over and over again is Shawshank Redemption. Okay, all that because never uh, seen. We're gonna, it. Be, we're gonna be. You gotta see it, man. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's worth the watch. Uh, I you, believe will, you. You, you will not be disappointed, I promise. I believe this you. is this is uh it has a black Jesus, few, bro. It's gonna be this, good. This is with very the very few movies that has a nine rating on IMDB. Yep. Yep. That is true. All right, how many and my rating for the show? Um I'm going to go 3.8. Okay. Let's go to did low. I think I oh, huh? yeah, I did pick my seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Rich. Yeah, uh, my favorite match has to be Joe and Dustin just for the effort that Dustin put in alone. Like, that to me warrants and deserves to be called the best match just because of that. Yeah. Um, my favorite segment. See, I don't want to be just like Canada Dry, so I'm gonna say Tony Storm because, yeah. like I said, it's always a good day. It's always a good day to see Thunder Rosa get hit in the face with a pan. That was gonna be my other moment. <laughs> see, I would have went with the Osprey if you if you would have went with that one. So it works out just fine. <laughs> we can cover all the bases. Um, as far as desert. Island movie, one that I could just watch and watch and watch and never get tired of. I present to you the girl next door. Okay, oh. nice. And how many bells are you going to bestow upon? Uh, I'm going to give this a 4.1. Okay, Mr. Isaacs. Well, 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 I guess it's my turn to wax poetic for the evening. Oh, oh he's calling his own shot. <laughs> my match of the night, gentlemen, is uh, Adam Copeland versus uh, Penta El Zero Meadow. Oh. That was my favorite. Um, favorite segment of the night is Will Ospreay. Um, I don't think I commented when we talked about it, but the guy has every right to defend himself, and uh, kudos to him for it. Yeah, I was glad to see him do it. And it was a hell of a promo. It was a hell of a shot. And I don't blame him at all for taking it. Yeah. And uh, my Desert Island movie that I'm going to throw out is uh, a classic, uh, a Quentin Tarantino classic, oh. Pulp Fiction. Nice. I love Pulp Fiction. Nice. It's my, probably my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. It's Pulp a good Fiction. one. Pulp Fiction is mine as well. And is yeah. the reason why I'm a filmmaker is because of Pulp Fiction. It's I almost said Scarface. <laughs> I almost said Scarface. Okay, yeah. Because that's like a nice long one too. Like, and you just you got everything in it. So oh, absolutely. Bomb action. <laughs> and my star rating, um, I'm probably gonna say three point two five bills. Woo! Okay, that brought the average down. <laughs> that's what, what I'm here reason, for. What was your reason for going that low? Uh, nothing. Just uh, nothing blew me away. Honestly, I mean, it, it was a yeah. solid show. Yeah. Yeah, it was a solid show. I don't think it was bad by any means, yeah. um, but nothing blew me away. I mean, I, you know, we, we all kind of had a problem even just picking a match of the night. Like yeah. it was a good show, but there was nothing really spectacular that we just immediately yeah, felt, said, that's the best. Yeah, It was well, a nice, my, it was a my, nice, good, good match to start the show and a good match to end the show. Mm. But in between, like, well, you're just giving us ketchup and mustard, bro. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a solid. It was a solid show. Yeah. I just worry that the, I just hope this show is not better than the Go Home Show because some of the last few, a few pay per views, the Go Home Show has not been that good. Yeah, yeah. they got to work on their Go Home a little bit. Definitely. Yep, I agree. All right, JFB's turn. Here we go. Favorite match. I'm gonna go with uh, Copes. The Cope Open. With Copeland and Penel. I thought it was really good. Great back and forth. Told a great story in the ring. Um, I love the fantasy aspect of it. Uh, segment, I, you know, I got to go with Will Ospreay. Uh, to, to just call out Triple H on his bullshit is just brilliant. You know, and especially coming off probably one of the most hyped WrestleManias that I have seen and I've been a part of for last 15 years. Like this was really hyped well and they did an amazing job with their show and to get that Will Ospreay just was ballsy. Um, I'm going to give the, Hey, it's a shame experience. 
Night, my brother. What's up, Shane? Good night. What up, dude? Uh, Desert Island movie since Mr. Isaacs took mine. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, the movie that made me become a horror fanatic. And that is 1972's Halloween from John Carpenter. Nice. Uh, I saw Amazing. that. I saw that when I was 10 years old. And the fact that people think people think that they remember it being more bloody and more violent, and it wasn't. And Jamie is, is Lee Curtis, Jason in this one or no? Huh? Is Jason in this one or no? No, that's uh, Michael Myers. Okay. Yeah, but Jamie Lee Curtis. Right in the thirteenth. That's right. It makes him the one. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis, like holds court yeah. in that movie, and it's absolutely amazing. So yeah, nineteen seventy two's Halloween, and yeah, uh, yeah, could, she's uh, like the first final girl to actually fight back in the horror. Yeah, if I could interject. That actually came out in nineteen seventy eight. Oh, 78. Sorry. 78. I thought 72 was really soon for this. I'm like, oh, yeah, 72 <laughs> when I was born. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to give the show a 3.5. Here's the deal. Realistically, the last three shows have had what I call the shit sandwich, where you have a great opener, you have a great closer, you have a pretty thick, but then there's that scoop of shit right there in the middle. <laughs> like, it happened to be the third match, which was Jericho. Yeah, uh, that Jericho one is uh, just... That thing was just the stupidest thing I've ever seen or heard. Yeah, I don't think it, it even does um, leave like, the, the Shane L promotions any favors. Yeah. No. no. Anyway. no it did nobody anything except make look, Shibata look like a clown. <laughs> so anyways, I give it a 3.5. Cumulative score, 3.6625. All right. Not bad. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's above average. Yeah. It's yeah, bad. absolutely. Above average. So, anyways, hey, we're at the end of the show. Here's how we're going to roll this. Guys, buy a shirt. Just buy a damn shirt. Right here, this one, the all shades Ooh. of excellence. Oh, yeah. Look at you know, what about, you know, the yeah. Hot Wheels? You know, let's yeah. talk about. You know, the original shirt, the shirt that started all modeled by our friend Natalia Markova. For WrestlingTees.com forward slash F and Wrestling. Guys, on behalf of Canada Dry, on behalf of Lord Ryan Rich, Mr. Isaacs, right below me, I am the JFB. Sometimes uh, life, life, life just kicks you in the nuts. I got to be honest, life will kick you in the nuts every once in a while. So I um, only wear uh, and yeah, you, you well, you can wear a cup, but uh, it brings you down, and it's okay to be down, it's not okay to stay down. So, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family, reach out, and they'll, they'll help you get up and they'll help you move forward. But you got to do the fighting too, you got to wrap Satan in that sharpshooter and make that bitch tap. And you say, just keep fighting, hit it. This has been an effing worldwide media production. You can find us on all social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and others. Head over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash effing wrestling. And while you're there, click like and subscribe. Want some swag? Head to our store at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash FN Wrestling. You can find all these links and much more at our awesome website, FNWrestling.com. As the JFB always says, you can book it. It's got to be the shot shooter!